Good, very early morning, angry alien enthusiasts, and welcome to this special bulletin. Again, a bulletin I wasn't expecting to release, pretty much thought that all of the news about 3i atlas and the perihelion situation was well in hand that it hadn't really changed course that nothing unusual nothing artificial or unnatural happened with this object as it made its closest approach to the sun at the moment that avi Loeb hypothesized that maybe it might carry out an oberth maneuver and then start heading towards earth that would be the ideal time for it to do it and then nothing seemed to happen seemed to stay very much on course and of course there are a huge number of smug individuals that were happy to start mocking the ufo crazies and and all of that they really just uh, were just chomping at the bit salivating at the prospect of doing that and now all of a sudden 3i atlas has changed course now to be granted it's not a lot it's not a massive deviation from its previous trajectory, but at the same time, even though we're not talking about a lot of kilometers here, we are talking about a deviation that's greater than any comet, any solar system comet has demonstrated while it's been this far away from the sun. Indeed, it's a greater deviation than 99% of the comets out there. But as excited as I am about all of this, I'm also a bit frustrated, a bit angry, and a bit sad, especially given the way that certain people that I used to really respect People like Brian Cox are talking about my community, the community of people who believe that there may be aliens visiting our planet. There may be UFOs that have a direct connection to extraterrestrial technology. And he's throwing Avi Loeb into that group and Dr. Villarol, people who have spent a lot of time doing some very serious science on this subject, trying to uncover some truths that others simply don't spend any time investing in. They simply don't think it's worth the time and worth the effort to look for something that isn't there because it's all crazy. And this latest development is going to be no different as far as these people are concerned, unless it gets a lot worse very soon. Nevertheless, even though these people may not be willing to accept it, this is a significant event in an already very strange tale. <music> All right. So once again, I this morning, I'm feeling pretty down, I, I have to say. And the main reason, I guess, I really like Brian Cox. I like a lot of the work that he's done. And he's gotten very angry, I think justifiably so, that there have been people creating AI deep fakes of him talking, I guess, I haven't even seen these, but I guess talking about how 3i Atlas is an artificial object or might be an artificial object or whatever. And there people have been doing a lot of this stuff. I mean, they have been doing more to damage the reputation of serious people who have been trying to do serious science about these types of phenomena than any debunkers, than any skeptics could possibly do. Creating these kinds of deep fakes of respected scientists and putting it out there online, or at least scientists that are well known in the media and have them say something that they simply would never say it is revolting it is deeply irresponsible and it is so damaging to everybody concerned it damages the reputations of the scientists who have been deep faked because it theoretically could hurt their reputations if people start to believe that they are saying things that they don't actually believe and then you go to the other end of the extreme and it damages the reputations of people like myself or people like Avi Loeb, people like Beatrice Villarol, people trying to do serious science on this topic and now we get lumped together with what Brian Cox is calling the UFO knobbers. 
And I have to admit, that was so damn offensive to me. With all the effort and all the time that I invest to say nothing of the time that scientists like Avi Loeb and Beatrice Villarol invest in trying to investigate all of this, to have all of that get lumped together with people who create these deep fakes, that is beyond insulting. But regardless, now that I've said all of that, Let's find out what's actually happening with 3i Atlas and what this deviation is all about. Okay, so in the course of this video, as usual, I'm going to quote extensively from an Avi Loeb article, this one entitled, First Evidence for a Non-Gravitational Acceleration of 3i Atlas at Perihelion. Quote, by the date of its perihelion, 3i Atlas displayed the first evidence of a non-gravitational acceleration, or NGA. Now, this is something that normal comets do as well. Any sort of explosive outgassing from a comet, which is what creates a comet's tail, that can sometimes shift the object around unless it's extremely big and extremely heavy. But in any event, the report, which I will link in the description, was filed by David Farnoshia, and I'm not sure if I'm right there, I'm probably not, but in any event, a navigation engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. Interestingly enough, he's doing his work, his JPL work, even though he's not getting paid for it. Why can't they give us the photographs? But I digress. In any event, he received his PhD in mathematics from the Galileo Galilei School of Graduate Studies at the University of Pisa, Italy. So this is not coming from some bizarre third-party source that hasn't been vetted. This is coming from a JPL employee who's hired to do these sorts of calculations. The non-gravitational acceleration was measured at the perihelion distance of 1.36 astronomical units, or 203 million kilometers. Keep in mind, 3i Atlas, even at its closest approach to the sun, was still over 200 million kilometers kilometers away and that's going to be important here later on a radial acceleration of 9 times 10 to the negative 7th power astronomical units per day squared was measured and a transverse acceleration relative to the sun's direction of 4 times 10 to the negative 7th power AU per day squared was also measured now, again that's not much 135 kilometers away from the sun and 60 kilometers worth of acceleration compared to its previous velocity relative to the sun's direction. So a total variation of about 200 kilometers or so on that day. If 3i Atlas is propelled by the rocket of effect of ejected gas, then momentum conservation implies that the object would lose half its mass over a characteristic time scale equal to the ejection speed divided by the measured non-gravitational acceleration. For a thermal ejection, ejection speed of a few hundred meters per second, the evaporation half-life of 3i Atlas is six months. This implies that over the month it takes 3i Atlas to cross a spatial scale of order its perihelion separation to the sun would suggest 3i Atlas would lose about a tenth of its mass. Such a massive mass loss should be detectable in the form of a huge plume of gas surrounding 3i Atlas during the upcoming months of November and December of 2025. Now, as I said, what is significant here is the fact that 3i Atlas didn't change course at all, not even the tiniest deviation in spite of obvious outgassing, and now all of a sudden it's changing direction, and it's changing direction by a lot if you compare it to other comets. We'll get to that in just a moment. ESA's JUICE spacecraft would be the first to detect this large mass loss in the first week of November, and later on December 19th, 3i Atlas will arrive closest to Earth at a separation of 269 million kilometers when hundreds of ground-based telescopes as well as Hubble and Webb will have the best opportunity to observe it. Given that data, it should be clear if 3i Atlas lost a tenth of its mass through sublimation of volatile ices when it was heated by intense sunlight at perihelion. 
massive evaporation of 3i atlas might explain its unusual brightening which i reported on yesterday based on observations of 3i atlas from the stereo soho and goes 19 instruments during the months of september and october alternatively the non-gravitational acceleration might be the technological signature of an internal engine. This might also explain the report on 3i Atlas getting bluer than the sun. For a natural comet, this blue color is very surprising. Dust is expected to redden the scattered sunlight, and the surface of 3i Atlas is expected to be 20 times colder than the 5800 degree kelvins at the photosphere of the sun, resulting in it having a redder color than the sun blue appearance at perihelion is a ninth anomaly in the list of unexpected properties of 3i atlas it could potentially be explained by a hot engine or a source of artificial light however it might instead be a signature of ionized carbon dioxide for a natural comet the reported level of non-gravitational acceleration corresponds to a modest spatial deviation of order of 10 times the radius of the Earth over the period of a month, insufficient to bring 3i Atlas significantly closer to any solar system planet from its original gravitational path. So the skeptics are immediately going to say, well, this is just typical non-gravitational acceleration at perihelion that we would expect with any comet, and please shut your mouths, you UFO knobbers. But when it comes right down to it, when you actually look at the historical data on non-gravitational acceleration for a wide variety of comets, they're dead wrong. This is far more significant NGA than any comet we've ever observed at this kind of distance. And let me prove it to you. First of all, let's talk about 67P churyumov gerasimenko and I'm probably mispronouncing all of that, I apologize, but at a distance of 1.24 astronomical units away from the sun. In other words, closer than 3i Atlas is currently, the NGA was 2 to 5 times 10 to the negative 10th astronomical units. That is 1% of what we are seeing, less than 1% actually, of what we are seeing with 3i Atlas. 81p Wild 2, 3 to 6 times 10 to the negative 10th power astronomical units at a distance of 1.59 astronomical units. 19p Borelli, 1.36 astronomical units and the NGA was 8 to 12 times 10 to the negative 10th power AUs not 10 to the negative 7th power we're talking 1 1,000th here of what we are seeing with 3i Atlas now comet Hale-Bopp that had lots and lots and lots of outgassing at a distance of 0.91 astronomical units substantially closer than 3i Atlas got at perihelion the nga was 4.2 times 10 to the negative ninth power astronomical units again one percent of what we're seeing with 3i atlas with halley's comet 5.5 to 7 times 10 to the ne negative ninth power 2p anka which is really really close 0.34 astronomical units insanely close compared to 3i atlas 1.5 times 10 to the negative eighth power then the y4 atlas which was a sun grazer comet 0.25 astronomical units from the sun this thing was getting heated up like it was in an oven only three times 10 to the negative eighth power astronomical units 10 percent of what we are seeing from 3i atlas and here is the only comet that comes close c2012 s1 ison ison which was a sun grazer comet that came 0.012 astronomical units away from the sun one percent of one astronomical unit insanely close and therefore was being heated up so much that it actually disintegrated one times 10 to the negative seventh power astronomical units still not as much as 3i atlas we're talking about an object that demonstrated 
almost no NGA to more NGA than we've ever seen from any other comet. But just in case you're thinking that 3i Atlas had the weirdest NGA of any interstellar object, Oumuamua would like you to hold its beer. The NGA for this object was 5 times 10 to the negative 6 power AU, or nearly 750 kilometers per day, about five times the NGA that we're seeing from 3i Atlas. And once again, that acceleration came when Oumuamua was very, very far away from the sun, and also when Oumuamua was demonstrating utterly no visible outgassing at all. And yet mainstream science would have us believe that some sort of mysterious, magical, invisible gas was pushing this object to a degree that absolutely dwarfs every comet in history. Who's being delusional here? So yeah, is this a massive course change? No, it isn't. But is it a course change that is bigger, more substantial than virtually every other comet that we've ever seen? More substantial, in fact, than any comet that we've seen at this distance from the sun carry out. Yeah, it is. It's a lot bigger than anything we've ever seen before. And again, as I mentioned in the video, for this course deviation to be taking place after all these weeks of 3i Atlas experiencing no NGA at all, in spite of very obvious outgassing from this object week after week after week, and yet no signs of it changing its trajectory, zero NGA in the face of everything that says that it should be changing course at least a little bit, outgassing should have a little impact on this object. And of course, the explanation is that it has to be very big, it has to be very heavy, whatever. And then all of a sudden, it gets to perihelion and takes off granted not takes off in our experience of what a rocket would do say something along those lines but compared to what it was doing it took off and it shouldn't have been able to so we need of course to wait to make sure that all of this information is correct, that these numbers are solid. It may even be a bigger deviation than was previously estimated. But regardless, we have to make sure that all of this is true. It probably is, to be honest. It's based on some very solid observational data. And then once we do have that confirmation, it's time to really watch 3i Atlas to see what it does next. Because even though this was a very substantial example of non-gravitational acceleration, even though this is something that shouldn't have happened given the circumstances, it could still be explained by natural causes and a catastrophic gush of sublimating materials from this object all at once at the moment of perihelion theoretically could have made this happen. But if this deviation continues as 3i Atlas moves further and further away from the sun, then that's something that's really going to challenge the beliefs of the skeptics. Thank you very much for watching. I'll keep you up to date on all of this. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, please consider supporting this channel on Patreon if you want to get access to my content early and access to exclusive content. All of that is possible for as little as $3 a month. Thanks again, and until next time, stay angry about space.